All right. Well, isn't God good in this place? I, mean, I just love, I just love God. Does anybody love God out there tonight? I Man, I just love falling in the presence of God. I just love hearing God speak to me. I just love, I love when people get into worship. And you know, in the youth ministry, we have all the kids, you know, they come up to the altar. And they, and they stand there, they lift their hands, and they're praising God, and they're just standing there. And I just love seeing people fall into the, to the presence of God, because, you know, when you fall into the presence of God, there is so much that God does for you. God speaks to you. God tells you things. God does all kinds of things. Whoa, whoa God, you hear? I think Pastor Tom's watching me, huh? <laughs> and I just, you know, I just love, it's an honor to be here tonight with you guys. Again, my name is Pastor Donnie Forbes. I'm the youth pastor. My wife and I oversee the youth ministry here. Yeah. It's an honor to be in this church. We love this church. We love you guys' life. We love what God is doing in Riverside. Does anybody else love what God is doing in this church? Yeah. Hey, were you here for the, the prophet that one night, what, what he was saying about this church exploding? Isn't that awesome? Yeah. Man, God is just doing so much. I see it already. I, I see it in the youth ministry. I see kids showing up. Listen, I got kids that come in there. I'm going to brag about this for a moment. Is that okay? Can I brag? Yeah. Okay, good. I got kids that come in there. They ride their bikes to church. They walk to church. Their parents don't go to church. They're working on them, and we're praying for their souls. But guess what? Those teenagers are showing up to church. And every time I see that, I'm just like, man, you guys just ride your bike, or you walk, and they come in all sweaty, and they're all hot. They're like, yeah, Pastor, do you have any water? We're like, yeah, man, come on, get some water. I mean, we, we want to take care of them, but man, they're coming to church. In this place, they're coming to this place, too. I've seen it in the first, second, and third service. It's, it's getting more full and more full every service. People are packing in, because God is doing something big in the city of Riverside. Well, hey, listen, can we have some fun tonight? Is that Okay. Because I believe i got a message for you guys that will change your life. Amen. I believe that this message will speak straight to your heart. I believe you came in one way and you're going to leave a different way. I believe this message is going to stay with you when you fall asleep at night. You're going to be thinking about it in the morning. Because as I was studying, God was having me think about stuff. And I was like, God, why do I got to go there? Listen to this. I know it's Wednesday and I know we all have a hard work week, right? Amen. And we're tired, so... You remember that movie in Rocky IV? Anybody remember Rocky IV? Yeah. Do you remember when they brought up the stage with, the, with, the, with, with Apollo Cream standing there dancing like, yeah, coming to America. Like, I'm not a singer, I just preach. <laughs> but do you remember when he came up the stage? Well, we got something here, man. I got a button I'm going to push. It'll bring out some monsters and a straw for your coffee so you can get right on it. <laughs> some of y'all were thinking, what? I got a monster? Yeah. Right back there, Randy, go ahead and get a monster. No, I'm just kidding. Go do that. Anyway, well, let's do this and let's pray because I want to dive right into the Word of God because I know that God has a word for you. Father, I thank you for tonight, God. Holy Spirit, we ask that you show up in a powerful way. We ask that you minister to the people, God. I'm, not, I'm just a vessel being used by you, Father God, the willing vessel that wants to be used, Father. I pray, God, tonight that you allow me, God, to speak into the hearts of these adults, God, speak into their lives, Father. I pray, God, that they would come in one way and they leave a different way, Father. Tonight I bless all the churches, God, in the Linden Empire, God, in the Riverside area, God, all over this place, God, all over the world, God. If they're preaching and teaching the gospel, God, we bless them the same way, God, that you bless us. In Jesus' name, we all say amen. You know, I love, I love what Pastor Tom does by blessing the other churches because it's not about us. It's about the church. It's about the body of Christ. Never once did I hear in the scripture that it's about a certain church. It was always about the body of Christ. So tonight I want to talk to you about a subject that, that uh, it's, it's a tough subject. And, and the title of my message is called The Spirit of Python. Why enable the Spirit of Python? Some of you are thinking, what? Python? I'm about to bring out a big old snake in a minute. No, I'm just kidding. But why enable it that? Because a python, when it goes after its prey, it chokes its prey to death. It squeezes its prey to death. So there's a spirit out there that I believe squeezes us to death. It keeps us, it keeps us in a place where we can't move. It keeps us in a place where we're stuck. It keeps us in a place where it's hard to get out of. So this place, it just wraps itself around us and it just squeezes us to death. You ever, you ever, you ever listen to this, guys? Have you ever now, some of you might think, man, you're weird, Pastor. Okay, I might be a little weird, but have you ever felt something like on you when you're asleep at night? Yeah? Am I the only one who's ever felt that? You felt that? 
I, I remember as when one of my kids was real little, but one of my, my youngest son, he, 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 he screamed. And my wife and I were like, what the heck? We're, we're running to his room. And he said, I felt something just squeezing me and I couldn't breathe, Dad. I couldn't breathe. And I said, listen, you don't have to take that. You just say, get off of me in the name of Jesus. You've already been beaten. You've, you've already been bruised. Get out of here. Amen. So then my son started having these things again. And all of a sudden, he would start saying, get off of me, Jesus. Get off of me, Satan. I plead the blood of Jesus over me. Get out of here. And then all of a sudden, it would, it would go away and away and away. And he stopped attacking him in that area. And I believe that the, the enemy tries to attack us in an area that hurts us the most. I believe that sometimes when we get together with our families, we don't get together with our families because of issues that have happened in the past. I believe sometimes that we don't get along with certain people because of issues that's happened in the past. I believe sometimes even at workplace that we, when, when, when we were promised to get a promotion, we were promised to, to get moved up in position and it doesn't happen, all of a sudden we get upset at the boss and we begin to treat him different. Am I preaching to myself tonight? I believe, that, I believe that the spirit of Python is a spirit of unforgiveness. And I, and I believe that God has called us to walk in forgiveness and not stay in unforgiveness. Listen, listen, listen. I thought about something the other day. I thought about how many times would I have in my life to minister to people and my family if I would just let the unforgiveness go? Because we got people in our family that aren't Christians, right? I mean, I may be a pastor. I may be doing ministry. But I also got a family. You know, we all got an Uncle Bill, Uncle Joe, and Uncle Rob, you know. We all got somebody in our family. And I always thought to myself, if I would have just let these issues go and let stuff flow out of me like Jesus called us to do, I would have a chance to minister to these people. So there was a time in my life where I thought I was going to start up a business. Has anyone ever felt like that before? Where I really thought I was going to start up a business. I'm like, okay, God, you called me to do this, and, and I'm going to do this business, and it's going to do great, and we're going to make a lot of money, and, and, and things are going to change in our household. This is going to be a great thing, God. Yeah, yeah, you're in this, God, right? And, and I thought, you know, I'm going to start this business. So then I begin to start the business, and I begin to, to do some of the side work. And some of you don't know I do the network administration, system admin, network engineer as well, so I work with computers and servers as well as pastor youth and pastor in the church. And I love it to death. Don't regret it one bit. God's given us all gifts. Use those gifts. And, and, and uh, I remember during this time that I was doing a, a job for somebody. And we got the job completed and everything done. But has, has anyone ever felt like they've been ripped off before? Oh, yeah. yeah? You don't have to raise your hand. Just kind of shake. You know, only raise your hand and be like, yeah, pastor, that's me. Because you're on live stream and that person might be like, hey. But I remember doing this job. And I remember when it came time, like, all right, man, I'm about to get paid. This is going to be great stuff. And then I remember the person stabbing me in my back and never paying me the money that they owed me. And I thought to myself, God, how the heck? Can I just be real with you? How am I going to forgive this bozo for doing that to me? How am I going to forgive him, God? How am I going to forgive him? This guy robbed me of this much money. It cost me a lot. And because of that, it put me in a situation to lose my house. Come on, man. How am I going to forgive him, God? And I started talking to God. And it would have made it real hard, young, real, real hard, I'm going to say young people. But you might be called that too. You might like that. But I'm used to speaking to youth. But what made it real hard, what made it real hard is this. I had to see that person on a regular basis. Anyone dealt with that before? Hallelujah, praise God. Jesus, you reign in my life. Oh, yeah. And I'm sitting on the other side like, oh, I just want to knock you out. <laughs> Jesus, you're worthy. Hey, brother, how you doing? God is blessed. Blessed with heaven's best. You know how it is. Highly favored with the Lord. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I remember me sitting on the side. Oh, man, I just want to stomp on you with my Timberland boots. I'm just kidding. Some of you got that. But then God spoke to me and said, didn't I forgive you for all the stuff that you did in your life? Ooh, 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 ooh. <laughs> Hashtag ouch. <laughs> I begin to feel the pain there. I'm like, oh, yeah, God, you sure did. 
So let me show you something tonight. I need, a, I need a volunteer. I need one person. I got an illustration. Now let me warn you ahead of time. Let me warn you ahead of time. This is kind of like Fear Factor stuff. Anyone watch Fear Factor? I got some crazy people in here. Do I got anybody who wants to, to, to be the guinea pig tonight? No, you're not going to be the guinea pig. But I have any volunteers tonight? Do I have anybody in here? Everybody's pointing to this guy over here. Greg, come on up here, man. You don't know what you're going to do. Give him a hand. Really give him a hand. Really give him a hand. So I got up here. Come on up here, Greg, on the, on the stage. On the stage? Yeah, I, I need you to come on the stage. I want everybody to see you. Here's what I got up here. I want to illustrate something to you. Because sometimes we hear about unforgiveness, and all of a sudden we just turn it off because we know we're walking in it. And tonight I believe God wants to open your heart and open your eyes to something different because I want you to see something that's going to be impactful and change your life. Definitely going to hurt you, but it's just kidding. <laughs> so here's what I got. I got cup number one. What are you looking? <laughs> cup number two. In cup number three. Okay? Now, don't be telling him not to touch three. Who was that? I'm just kidding. It's reverse day. Don't touch one. Levels of how we are when unforgiveness first starts. How you can relate to how unforgiveness starts. Because listen, when it happens once, and you don't learn to forgive, guess what? It's gonna happen again. When it happens again, and you don't learn to forgive, guess what? It's gonna happen again. When it happens again, somebody hurt us at a church, someone said something about us at work, someone, someone hurt us in our family, guess what? It's gonna happen again. And again, and again. You know the Bible says like 70 times seven, right? We wanna do the math, that's just every day, all day, it's gonna happen. And Jesus said, walk in forgiveness. Greg, what I'd like for you to do, he's trying to get away from this, ain't gonna happen. I want you to drink number one. I want you just to slam it, man. So slam? just slam it like a cold Coca Cola. <laughs> slam it. Just drink it. Drink it. Come on, drink. Chug, 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 right? Good stuff? Not bad? Okay. Okay. He's got a little bit, a little bit of unforgiveness in his life. I saw that. A <laughs> little bit of unforgiveness in his life. By the time you're done, you're going to have a lot of unforgiveness towards me. <laughs> Number two, some more stuff happens in his life. Things are getting tougher. Promise, you know, promise stuff in his life, never saw it. Number two, go. Drink. <laughs> Come on, I don't got all night, man. Notice his face. Woo! <laughs> At this point, he can choose to forgive. He can choose to release the person. But Greg says, I don't want to forgive. I don't want to release yet. I'm okay. I'm comfortable. I can handle this a little bit more. This, <coughs> you know, this, this nastiness. I can handle it a little bit more longer. Just a little bit more. I can handle this. I got it. I got this. So Greg goes in and he's promised a, a promotion in his job. And they've been talking about it for six months. Huge raise in money. And all of a sudden, you know, he doesn't get that promotion. And, and, and the person he works with, who doesn't do anything, any, you know what I'm talking about, anybody? Yeah. Person who doesn't do nothing. They just sit there, they just show up and get paid just to, to show up. They don't work hard. The person who works hard doesn't get it, but the person who doesn't work hard, he ends up getting it. That's in the natural, not the spiritual. That was for free. <coughs> so he still decides to walk in unforgiveness. Some things happened in his past. He sees the people over and over. He still holds the grudge. Why God, why me? Why does this happen to me all the time? Still holds on to it. And then all of a sudden, he ends up drinking it. Go ahead, drink number three. Come on, man, just drink number three. I told you it's like Fear Factor stuff. Drink number three. Get a picture of his face. I, I would just slam it. 
Come on, Greg. Come on. Come on. Come on, man. Slam it. Go, 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 go. Come on, guys. Go. Woo! What was that? Go ahead and have a seat. Give him a hand. Yeah. If unforgiveness, if unforgiveness is so bad, and it squeezes us like the spirit of Python, then why do we choose to hold on to unforgiveness in our life? If it's as nasty as what Greg said it was, and he, you saw his face on one, he was like, okay, I got this. Number two, he was like, yeah, it's a little different. Number three, man, he was like, oh, God, this just stinks. But all of a sudden, he drinks it, and we do the same thing in our life when we don't learn to forgive and we don't learn to release. We hold on to, our, we hold on to what happened to us. We don't let it go, and guess what? It becomes poison to our body. Becomes poison to our body. Oh, oh I love, I, I love this, I love this story in the Bible where, 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 the, where, the, where, the, where the father has two sons, and his youngest son says, "Dad, I want the inheritance, and I want it early." Does anybody have sons or and kids out here? Raise your hand. You got some kids, and they come to you. Hey, Dad, guess what? I know you're you're busy, you're busy in this, but God, I want my inheritance early. So the son, the father says, "You know what, son? Go ahead, take it. Here it is." Here it is. He didn't question him. He didn't think about it. He just said, you know what? You're my son. I'm going to believe you're going to do what's best. How many of us want the best and believe the best for our kids, right? I got three boys. I believe the best for them. Although sometimes they can be knuckleheads. You know, when you go to the school teacher meetings, you're just like, where did you come from? You're not in my DNA. Nah, just kidding. <laughs> you're your mom. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. Can we have fun at church? Is that all right? So all of a sudden, the father gives the son, he gives the son the inheritance. Oh man, the son is living large now. The son has the inheritance, he's going everywhere he wants, he's buying everything he wants. Listen, if, if they had all the clubs, like we had clubs today, he was going from club to club, he was club hopping and club jumping. He was going all over the place, spending all that money, all that money and all that inheritance that, he, that his father gave him. But something I realized in the story is his son realizes and he begins to, 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 to repent for it. And, and there's some key things in, in this story that the son comes back and the father sees him afar off, the word of God says. So the father knew somewhere in his life sometime he was going to come back. He was going to come back sometime. And the son got to his senses and said, man, this isn't going to cut it for me. I don't have a, this, this lifestyle. Why do I want to live this when my father owns all this? And, and, and the son comes back, and the Bible says that the father sees him afar off. And then it says it like this. He came back, and he hugged him, and he kissed him, and he gave him the finest robe to put on him. Now, be real with yourself. How many of you would have your kids run off with your inheritance, blow all your money, come back, and you go, here, come here, baby. Come here. Come here. I got the best clothes for you. You know and I know you want to knock them out. You know it. So you sing your head like, oh, I'd kill him. I'd get him. I'd get him. But see, this, fa this, this father took the example and displayed exactly what Jesus would do. And how much more does Jesus do in our life when we mess up, when we fall in unforgiveness, when we fall in bitterness, when we fall in shame, when we fall in guilt, when we fall in jealousy, when we fall in insecurity? How much more does Jesus say, come on, man. Come on, come to me. I'm your father. Let me love you. Let me hug you. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come to me. He never once said, oh, don't come to me. Oh, get out of here. He never once did that. But he had open arms and said, come. You know, it didn't matter what happened in your life. It doesn't matter what, what, what went wrong. It doesn't matter how many times you got hurt. It doesn't matter how many times you feel like you failed. Jesus said, come to me as though you are. And his son comes back. And his father embraces him with love with honor, he respects him, even though he messed up the way he did in life. The father still said, I don't see any of that. I see, what, I see something different. I thank God that Jesus says, I don't see what I see here. I see something different. 
I thank God that he's not taking note. Oh, you messed up here. You messed up there. Oh, you failed this test. Oh, you failed this. How many of you, are, you know, you're Christians in here. You feel like you're taking tests all the time. Anybody? Anybody feel like that? You feel like you're always in test, whether it's a test of faith, whether it's, a, it's, just, a, it's just a test of, your, of, your, of, of how you act and your integrity. I mean, how many of you ever feel like you're just taking a test? Yeah? Pass the test and we'll take the same one again. Pass that test and we don't take the same one again. And I believe this, that God has placed such a spirit of heaviness on the church to learn to forgive and release people who've hurt them. Because you're not going to get far in your walk with Jesus Christ if you don't learn to forgive people and release them. Listen, forgiveness is not you saying, oh, what they did was okay, or how, how this happened was just perfectly fine. It's not you giving them any leverage. It's you saying, you know what, I forgive them. I'm handing them back to you, Jesus. You deal with them. We can't deal with them, but Jesus can. And you know, when I, got, when, I, when I was sitting in church and seeing that person all the time, lifting their hands, praise God, hallelujah, and the time I just wanted to run over there and knock them out real fast and go sit back down and pretend like nothing happened. I didn't see anything. <laughs> My mind was going everywhere during this time. Because I was thinking, how do, you, how do you do someone like this and you tell everybody you're a Christian and you're standing in the front row lifting your hands, praising God, but yet you can't even take, keep your word and your integrity and paying somebody what you owe. So all this stuff is going on in my head. And God says, who do you think you are to judge them? You just shut up and do what I tell you to do. And I thought, ooh, God, not again. Not again. Why do I got to be the one that's wrong? And finally I said, you know what? I forgive them. I release them. And it wasn't until the point where I said, I forgive them. And I released them that God started to move in my life. While I was holding on to them the whole time, guess what? They were living their life. They were doing whatever it was that they wanted to do. They were living large. They were doing whatever it was. They were going out to eat. They were going to church. They were doing everything. Guess who was the one stuck in bondage? Me. Let me get five people real quick if I can do some illustration real fast. Come up here, five people. Just any, any five. Any five. You're not going to be drinking anything. It's not a fear factor, I promise. <laughs> I just want to show you something. I, I like to do illustrations. I, I pastor to youth, and I believe that people do learn by seeing visual things because we're up against visual things all day, right? Okay, let me get you four to make it just to hold hands and make a circle. And let me get you to be in the circle. You're an unforgiveness, okay, bud? Thanks. <laughs> He's not really an unforgiveness, <laughs> it's just the illustration. He's an unforgiveness because I did something to him. I hurt him. I hurt you really bad. I'm sorry, but I hurt you. And I'm living my life. I'm doing whatever it is I want to do. Hey, man, you want to go out to eat? Let's go, David. Hey, you want to go get some sushi? Let's go. Hey, you want to go eat, eat some food? Let's go. Hey, you want to go to the movies tonight? Hey, let's go. Hey, you want to go, go to Magic Mountain? Let's go. I'm living my life. Right? You get the picture here? I'm still living, man. I'm, I'm running. I'm working out. You know, I'm, I'm eating right. I mean, I'm living my life. But yet this guy is surrounded in walls. He's surrounded in walls. How many of us feel like we could, we're surrounded in walls at times because we, we're in unforgiveness? Just be real with yourself. Be honest with yourself tonight. Because we're going to break that spirit of python over this place tonight because Jesus wants us to walk in forgiveness. So all of a sudden, here it is. He's in walls. Walls all around him. Turn this way, you have a wall here. Turn this way, a wall here. Turn this way, you got a big wall right here. Turn this way, you got another wall. You're not going anywhere. But guess what? You're stuck in unforgiveness, and I'm the one who hurt you, and I didn't even know I hurt you, but yet I'm still living my life, and you're holding on to a grudge. Why are you even holding on to it? Can I preach for a moment? Sometimes we hold on to stuff that we shouldn't even hold on to. Sometimes somebody hurts us, they don't even realize what they do. It's better for you to come up to them and say, hey, listen, you hurt me and this is how I feel. Because if you don't, what happens is this, you allow the enemy to attack your mind right at that point. And every time you see that person, another wall goes up, another wall goes up, another wall goes up, another wall goes up. And guess what? You're secluded in a place like this. 
You're secluded in a place like this. You're hurt. You're stuck. And I'm living my life. And you're not going anywhere because you can't forgive and release that person or that thing or whatever it is in your life. It's hard for you to break that spirit of python. Why allow it to choke you up and squeeze you to death when Jesus says, I freed you to be free? Because you're comfortable. I don't want to face that. I don't want to see that person. My life is fine without them in my life. That's a lie. Because every time they come around, you wish that you were in their life still. Am I preaching a little bit? Am I talking a little bit? Is this real enough for you? Is this, is this real? Can I, be, can I be real with you? I don't like being fake and phony. I like to be real. Because I believe the church has, I believe that there's things in the church that God wants to address so he can take it to another level. There's people in the church today who are sitting in the church today that aren't getting involved in ministry because you got hurt at the last place you were at. And you feel like if I step out and get into this place of ministry, they're going to hurt me the same way. Listen, I've been hurt in church over and over. I've seen my dad be called a pastor one week, and I've seen the next week them tell him, you're not the man in front of the congregation. How do you think my perception was towards the church? Hard. But guess what? God had to free me. God had to set me free. And there's people in this room today that you got a call of God on your life, man, to preach the gospel, to do ministry, to build the kingdom of God, and you're not doing it because you're stuck in unforgiveness. You're stuck in unforgiveness. And all God is saying, I ain't called you to be stuck in unforgiveness. I called you to be free. I've called you to learn to forgive people and release people, listen, I know it's not an easy thing. And I'm not saying one bit that it's going to be easy for you to forgive people who've hurt you or to forgive people who've, who've, who've said things about you. It's a hard thing. But when Jesus is in it, he's the one who does it. When Jesus is in it, he's the one who does it. Listen, you can't forgive people on your own, but when Jesus' power comes inside of you and he says, this is what I've called you to do and I'm going to help you do it. Oh, guess what, man? All of a sudden, you're like a rocket ship ready to be launched out of unforgiveness. Now it's forgiveness in your life. But if you stay in unforgiveness, guess what? You're not going anywhere. God called you to preach the gospel, Chris, but guess what? You can't go. You're in unforgiveness. God called you to lay hands on the sick and they shall recover and, and you shall see visions and dreams. But guess what? Your heart's hard towards God. You're in unforgiveness. God's called you to do big things for the kingdom. He's called you to start a business. He's taught you to, to do all these things. But guess what? You can't because you got hurt in a prior business and you're scared to step out again and you're scared of failing again. And guess what? You're in unforgiveness. Now you're in unforgiveness with yourself because I don't want to step out. I'm comfortable where I'm at. I'm comfortable. God's called you to preach the gospel, but you don't do it because you've been hurt somewhere. God's called you to love your kids the way we're called to love them, but you don't because you're in unforgiveness because your parents never loved you the way you wanted them to love you. So now your kids don't experience what you dream to experience. Ooh. Just like the serpent snuck up on Adam and Eve, right? Yes. Yep. To convince them to disobey God is exactly what he does in our life. He sneaks up, convinces you to fall in unforgiveness towards those people. Church, it's time to be a generation it's time to be people of God. It's time to be real. It's time to say, you know what? I'm not going to be in unforgiveness anymore. I'm going to live my life in forgiveness. I'm going to forgive those people who hurt me. I'm going to forgive my boss. I'm going to forgive my uncle, my aunt, my, 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 my neighbors. I'm going to forgive all those people who've hurt me in my life because they're holding me back and they're still living their life. But God, you've called me to forgive. You've called me to release. You've called me to do this, God. Why do I want to stay stuck? Why do I not want to do what you called me to do? Why do I want to be in the same place in three years that I was three years ago? 
and unforgiveness. Guess what? He all of a sudden decides to forgive and release people in his life. Remember what I said when the, when the son who spent all the money and all the inheritance, he came back and the father embraced him? The father said, come on, son, you messed up, but guess what, old man, I love you so much. I got you. I cover you. This is a perfect place. I, I, you're, you're, you're the finest to me because he saw him different. And we need to see ourselves the way God sees us or we'll never get out of unforgiveness. We'll stay in unforgiveness towards ourselves the rest of our life until we get to a point to say, you know what, I accept this in my life. God, you know what's best for me. And God, you know what you got coming for me. So I forgive and I release these people. I release them once and for all. No more am I going to be in unforgiveness because I don't want to be held in bondage and chains and bound to the enemy anymore. So here's the picture. He decides to get out of unforgiveness. He decides, you know what, the person who hurt me, I'm going to forgive him anyway. I'm going to forgive him. I'm going to let him go. So all of a sudden, one wall comes down. You guys rotate this way. Rotate, yeah. Sure. Yeah, there you go. You're still going to keep a wall up. He decides, you know what, I'm not going to be mad at God no more. I'm going to look at myself and say, where did I go wrong? Who do I need to forgive? God, you didn't do this to me. I chose to do this. Then all of a sudden, this wall goes down. Break this wall. Now spin around. Now picture this, guys. This is you and your life. This is you and your life. Years go by, still holding on to one little thing, still bothers him a lot, holding on to it has an encounter with Jesus in church on a Wednesday night, Sunday morning, God speaks to him, says you gotta release this person in your life. They're holding you back from the blessings that I have for you. How many know that God has blessings for you? Raise your hand. How many know we stop our blessings by living our life of unforgiveness? I don't wanna stand, I don't wanna stand, I don't wanna stand in a place, imagine yourself in a warehouse with gifts all over the place. And Jesus says, come on in, come on in. And he shows you all this stuff. And you're looking at it like, oh, yeah, this is like Christmas now, man. This is the best one I've ever had, you know. And you're looking at all this stuff, but then he says, oh, wait a minute, stop. Stop. You don't get none of this. Next person, come on in. They walk in, yeah, they're excited. They see, the, they, they see all the gifts. And Jesus says, man, you pick your section. It's all yours. And you're like, whoa, 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 whoa. What about mine, God? What's up here? I thought we were equal people here. Come on, man. He says, whoa, you got some unforgiveness. You got some unforgiveness. You got some stuff you got to deal with. Then all of a sudden, the guy says, you're right. Surrenders his heart. Surrenders his unforgiveness. Gets right. And all of a sudden, guess what happens? God says, now you got all your blessings that you want. Don't you know? that some of you are holding back the blessings that God has for you right before you by choosing to stay in unforgiveness that you're in. Some of you are looking for a job, a job and God's saying, man, I got that perfect job for you, but I just need you to learn to forgive because when I'm going to put you in this place, at this job, your boss might treat you the same way and I don't want you to not to forgive him. I want you to forgive and release and keep on going. And all of a sudden you say, God, I forgive that person. And all of a sudden that job comes the next day. Some of you got some broken relationships in here. You know, it was sad. I was talking to a lady at work today. Her and her husband, they've been married for eight years, and she just decided they're just going to up and leave. And then the divorce, I said, why would you do that? She goes, well, because I'm tired of being, doing everything at home. I work all day. He doesn't do anything. And I thought, you know what? Jesus never, I said to her, you know what? God never called you for divorce. Why don't you try to work it out? She looked at me like, what? <laughs> she gave me that eye like, what? I said, why don't you forgive that guy for what he's done? Because what you're doing right now is you're holding yourself a grudge. And let me tell you something, sweetheart. Let me enlighten you a little bit, I said. She looked at me like, huh? I said, you do this now, five years from now when you get married again, guess what you're going to do? The same thing because you never forgave and you never released. Same thing when people say, I got offended at a church, I'm leaving and going to another church. Church would grow if people would learn to walk through their offenses and get healed. People would stay in church and the churches would grow. 
But instead, what we do is we get hurt, we get offended, and we leave. Guess what's going to happen at the next church? Within six months, you're there. You're going to get hurt. You're going to get offended. Guess what? You're going to bounce to another church. You're going to say, what church you come over? Six months ago, I came from this church. And then another six months go by, guess what? You're, in, you're the same thing. You got hurt again. You're in bitterness. You're, 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 you got offended real bad. Guess what? You left the church, went to another church. You're never going to get planted in the house of God. And the Bible says get rooted and planted in the house of God. It doesn't say get rooted and skip through the churches and, plant, and then plant yourself. It says stay rooted and planted in the house of God. So all of a sudden, here's what, here's what happens. Chris decides, I'm laying it all down. I'm going to forgive. And I'm going to release all these people in my life tonight. I'm going to release them. And the wall comes down, completely out of the way. Here's the wall, it's broken. Now Chris has a way to the calling where God has placed you. No more is he held here. Right now, Chris, let me see, your, let me see. Right now, Chris, you're now walking into the blessings that God has. You decide to forgive, you decide to release. Guess what, you're being blessed, you're being blessed, you're being blessed. Oh, something else happened in his life? Guess what, he knows better. Forgive and release, guess what? Keep on walking, man, keep on walking, keep on walking. Keep on going, keep on going, keep on going, keep on going. Run around this place, Chris, come on, come on, man, come on, come on, come on, run, 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 run. Why? Because he's not in unforgiveness anymore. He's living his life in freedom. He's living in forgiveness. He's not stuck anymore, so now he's free. Come on, Chris, keep going, keep going. You're going to work out tonight. All of a sudden, guess what? He laid his life down. He said, God, heal me. God, touch me. God, help me walk in unforgiveness. I don't want to stay there anymore. But instead, I want to be in forgiveness. I want to forgive those who hurt me. See what happens? See what happens when you decide to say, you know what? I want to live my life in forgiveness. I don't want to stay stuck in unforgiveness anymore. Church, I challenge you tonight. Some of you are like, ouch. Come on, pastor, why tonight? I challenge you tonight because God spoke to me and gave me a word. And he said, those who respond and say they want forgiveness in their life, I'll break that unforgiveness and that spirit of python off their life. Tonight, if you know you're in unforgiveness, I want you to slip your hand up all over this place, from the front to the back. Don't be ashamed. Don't be afraid. We have unforgiveness in life. Why let it hold us back? Why let it stop us from getting to where God wants to take us? Why let it hurt us? Why let it keep us there? Come on, if you got unforgiveness, hold your hand up. Hold your hand up. If you're living your life right now and you're walking in unforgiveness, I see hands going up everywhere in this place. Come on, there's a few others that are holding on to it still. Why hold on to it? Release it. Let it go tonight. Let's break the spirit of Python off of our life. Listen, when that father embraced his son, he didn't blame him. He didn't warn him. He didn't say anything. He just grabbed him, put the robe on him, yeah. and treated him the way, same way Jesus would treat you. And Jesus is saying, break that spirit off of you tonight. Break that spirit. Put your hand up. Raise your hand. Don't hold on to it no more. There's a few of you holding on to it. Stop holding on to it. Break it tonight. Let it go tonight. Let it go. Let that spirit go. Listen, you don't want to hold yourself in the walls like this example like he just was. When God breaks those walls down, now you're flying like a rocket, ready to do what God called you to do. But slip your hand up if that's you. Front to the back. If you, want to, if you want to break the spirit of Python in your life, raise your hand. Father, I come to you right now in the name of Jesus. I plead the blood over every person, God, that's in this church, Father. Father, I thank you, Lord God, that they've recognized unforgiveness in their life tonight, God. I thank you, Lord, that they said, no longer am I going to walk in unforgiveness, God. I thank you, Father God, that you've called them, God, to live a life of freedom, Father God. I thank you, Lord, that when they see the person, God, that hurt them, when they see the situation that hurt them, God, that they will know that they forgave them once and for all, God. I break the spirit of Python right now in the name of Jesus over this place. You will no longer hold this church in unforgiveness. We will will people in a generation to learn to forgive and release people, God, and give them back to you, God, and let you deal with their hearts. Let you deal with them, Father. So tonight, yes, Father. in Jesus' name, yes. I pray yes. over every person in this place who's walking in unforgiveness that it's broken in Jesus' name. Yes. Yes. Jesus' name. I'll give God a praise. So what did the father do? Same thing you're going to do. You're going to move into action. 
The father moved into action. Remember the Bible said he saw, the, 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 he saw his child from afar off? You're going to see that situation from afar off. And instead of holding yourself back and staying in your unforgiveness that you just broke free from, guess what you're going to do now? You're going to move into action and handle it. Amen. You're going to confront it. Right. You're going to say, you know, brother, you hurt me. And I've been hurt for years, but guess what? I choose to forgive you. Right. And Jesus loves you. Can you forgive me? Amen. You know, I remember uh, I judged my dad for a lot of things. And I remember the day I had a, when the Lord told me, go talk to your dad. Man, you know, I love my dad. I have a great relationship with him. But I judged him for a lot of things. And I remember the Lord told me, you need to ask your father to forgive you. And I said, what? More like he needs to, what a minute, why do I got to ask him to forgive me? He's really forgiving us here together. What's up with that? But I know that God said, no, you go talk to your father. You talk to your father. And I said, okay, God, I will. So I went to my dad. And I said, dad, I need to ask you a question. And he said, what is it, son? I said, I need to ask you to forgive me. And he looked at me and he said, I said, because I've judged you. And you were called to be a pastor and you never did it. So I felt like I could never do it. And I judged you. And he looked at me with tears and said, I messed up, but you didn't. And your kids won't. What is this, people? When you say, God, I need forgiveness in my life. I'm stuck, God. He's going to give you that forgiveness that you need. He's going to break you free from that unforgiveness. He's going to crush that spirit of python. And tonight, he did that in this place. Tonight, if you guys got something from God, give God a praise.